when, when you listen to the presentations here, um, particularly the one yesterday with uh, Jean-Claude uh, mm -hmm. Guimreteau, yeah. um, it's just amazing. One of the things that really struck home for me was he said that pretty much the fascia should not be called the connective tissue, it should be called the constituent tissue. Nice. Yeah. Could you talk about that? That's very impressive. I recommend everybody to look at these uh, beautiful video clips. Mm -hmm. You can get it from Gimbato's new book. It's a must-have for everybody because you will move different. Yeah. You will touch different if you see this everything connecting fibrous network. Mm -hmm. Of course it is a connecting tissue, yes. but for him to place an emphasis on a constitutive connective tissue, uh, it makes uh, an increased uh, understanding that every organ is embedded into that tissue network and how good your, your heart is pumping, how good your lungs are functioning, your liver, how good your biceps is contracting, it does not only depend on the organ but on the meshwork in which it hangs and, and, and if that becomes fibrotic as we age then you can strengthen the muscle but the network will not respond. Yeah. So, uh, so that's definitely a new understanding yes. uh, that we look at this fibrous network and how can we influence the stiffening that often happens with aging biochemically but more important biomechanically. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like when we learn anatomy still uh, today, we learn anatomy in terms of the individual muscles mm -hmm. and the, the, the actions of the muscles. Um, but the vision he was painted was one of, in a sense, one fascial network mm -hmm. where the muscles are embedded within pockets yeah. in that network. Yeah. And one of the things that was interesting in one of the research presentations was they had looked at when you increase the flexibility in the lower limbs by stretching the lower limbs you actually get an effect in the cervical spine isn't that beautiful yeah yeah it's amazing yeah, yeah. but it makes sense if, if you visualize and feel this network that comes from the plantar fascia right. uh, we actually have some studies in germany to look at the heel pad yeah. And as you become a jumping, uh, no, a grumpy German who always lands with their heels in a military march on the ground, the heel pad doesn't slide as much anymore. And then the network of your plantar fascia does not transmit the tension into the Achilles tendon, into your hamstring muscles, into your lumbar dorsal fascia. But as you get the heel pad to slide again, two, three millimeters, then you do a foot massage on, your, on, yeah. on a roller or something like that in a plantar fascia and you can get your, heel fur, your, your head further upwards. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very nice to look at this body-wide network and find out where you have individual areas yeah. where you have an increased adherence yes. that you then may need to work on more specifically or get your yoga practice supported with a roller or an elbow or a practitioner right. that then you can do with the gesture again and the whole body is participating. Yes, so we're not necessarily just having to conceptualize musculoskeletal health in terms of flexibility and strength of the muscles but really this adhesion yeah. and the ability of the fascia and the muscle fibers within the fascia to glide and slide mm -hmm. effortlessly. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, I have the same problem as you seem to have. Is it sliding? Is it gliding? Uh, I don't know in English language. I'm Danish yeah. so I have Okay, so we have too. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, a sliding would fit perfectly if you have two membranes that have no connection with each other. But as Gimbert Ho showed, it's a shearing motion. So if you do uh, between my hand and this hand, there is a network in between. So they are not sliding in the old sense. Right. They are doing a shearing motion in relationship to each other. Because everything is connected with each other, so nothing can slide in relationship. But it's a, it's a network allowing shearing forces. Yeah. So yoga is not a sliding practice, it's a shearing uh, training for your 
fibrous network from your galia up in neurotica, the t uh, connective tissue up, up on your skull, all the way to your plantar fascia. Mm -hmm. And as the research from Marilyn Langevin and others has shown, that's presented here in low back pain patient, it doesn't slide. So this diving suit that we have under the subcutaneous connective tissue that's covering the whole body, in low back pain patient, it doesn't glide, shear, uh, whatever you call it, yes. in, the, in the lower back. And then you may need to look for a way, how can you increase it? So yeah. it's similar, if my uh, jacket, uh, normally it would glide, but right. if you pin it here, right. then I suddenly cannot lift my arm. And then you get, you know, the, then you get the pins out, and wow, now, <laughs> now it goes. Yeah. So does this mean that everything we thought about movement and exercise science up until now is basically wrong? And out mean, the window, no, out the no, window. no, no, <laughs> please get it in again. But uh, most of the things that have been explained by compartmentalizing the body, mm -hmm. saying this muscle is short, this muscle is doing that, uh, Almost everything that we had in musculoskeletal medicine, looking at muscles and joints and ligaments, uh, will have a significant rewriting when you include the muscular connective tissues. Mm. Uh, because uh, that has been shared here a lot. The muscle almost never does the function that I learned from the anatomy book. You know, pulling origin and insertion together. No, you know, that was good enough for the exam. And it was so hard to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now we know uh, at least a third of the force does not go from the origin to the insertion. It goes in the neighboring tissues. Uh, so then okay. your gluteus maximus, that I used to learn as a one joint hip extensor right. and uh, external rotator. But a third of the fibers, and some people 50% of the fibers, are continuous, do not go into the femur, they go in the IT band that goes below the knee. So then your gluteus maximus is a knee joint stabilizer. And then you need to put your textbook down. <laughs> <laughs> so don't throw it out of the window, you know. Right, right. But please put, put fascia in. Yes. So definitely, I mean almost every chapter uh, will be rewritten, not completely rewritten, right. but getting this 30% or whatever the proportion is, yeah. how, th how the force transmission is altered when you include connective tissue, that you add that yeah. and then look at the chapter again.